What up Jeep Nation? Today we're going to go over how to change the oil in a JT Gladiator or JL Wrangler. Same engine, same process. Let's check out the tools to use. Okay, so first off, the oil. You're going to need a 0W20. You're going to need a filter. Make sure you go check out your filter. For me, I went with the KNN PS7026. You're also going to need a 24 mil socket, and that is going to be for your oil cap, for your oil filter right here. You're going to need some kind of a tool, either a really fine uh, flathead screwdriver or a pick to be able to take the rubber off of your old filter. And then last but not least, you're going to need a 13 mil wrench. That's to take the oil screw off of the bottom of the oil pan and some gloves don't hurt. Oil pan to catch the oil. Let's get started. So, gotta say a big shout out to my dad. He's the one that taught me a lot of the mechanical stuff that I do. I'm not the greatest mechanic in the world, but I know how to do the basics and those things help me along the way to keep some of the costs down and enjoy my vehicle, get to know it a little bit better. So we're gonna make this very simplistic as if my dad was telling me what to do. So, we went over our tools. Next we're gonna do is, we're gonna come down here, grab our oil filter, oil catch can, whatever you wanna call it, and throw it underneath there. Tray for the oil, oil catch can, you get the idea. So after we do that, we're gonna come over here and we're gonna crack the oil filter valve on the cap. We're gonna open this up here, and then if you're wondering how to check the oil, which is pretty straightforward, it's got a yellow uh, handle on it, it's right here. We're gonna grab that bad boy, lift it up. So when we change our oil, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna lift up the cap. We're gonna come over here and unscrew the fill valve. Now we're not gonna take it off because something could get in there while we're messing around, so we're gonna leave it on, just unscrew it so that way the air can breathe. And then we're gonna come in here with our 24 mil wrench and socket and uh, we're gonna unscrew this and just crack the valve so that way it can actually allow, so we don't get a vacuum if that, if that makes sense. First steps, like I said, we're gonna grab our 24 mil socket. I like to use an extension, makes it easier. We're just gonna place that on the oil filter cap. So that goes there. You're going to grab your socket wrench and make sure that you have it set up to go loose. And then let's crack that bad boy off. Okay, now it's off. Now, what we don't want is a ton of oil spilling out. So we're not going to take it all the way off. We just wanted to crack it. So. Let's put our socket and wrench down. Let's grab our 13 mil. Let's grab our rags, or excuse me, our gloves. And let's go underneath. Okay, so we're underneath the engine. I didn't put it up on the lift because I wanted to kind of show you guys how it would be for you if you don't have a lift. So the first thing you want to do is you want to find your oil uh, drain screw. That's going to be right here. On the Jeeps, on the JLJTs, we have this teeny tiny little oil pan. Um, I don't know what to say about it, but uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take our 13 mil wrench, which BAM! And then we're going to loosen it up. Now, before we do that, we're going to move our oil pan in front of us. And the reason is, here's a nice little helpful note, the oil pan, or excuse me, the oil is going to shoot straight out long ways. We want to take out our plug in the oil filter or the oil catch. That way the oil drains in it. Move this bad boy right here. Take our wrench. Make sure we're loosening it. Unlike what I just did there. Now, I drove this Jeep because I like to get the oil nice and warm so that way it flows good when it comes out. So, we're going to flip around. Oh, this is why it's nice to use the lift. 
want to make sure I catch this thing in case it starts shooting up really hard. So you don't want to loosen it all the way off because you don't want to get your tools dirty. So. Lift it up. Catch that initial drain. And of course it shot all over. So, really black. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our oil screw from our drain pan and we're gonna go up, we're gonna inspect it, we're gonna clean off a rubber gasket, which I'll show you guys where it's at, and we're gonna let this drain. So, let's go back up top. What we want to do when we pull the bolt out of the oil pan is we want to inspect it. We want to look around and see if we see any metal shavings or any kind of grit that's built up inside the screw itself. In this case we don't, which is awesome. I changed the oil 2,000 kilometers after I first got it. I just wanted to make sure that all the oil that they used whenever they're breaking in the engine was out of it and we had fresh oil in it. So uh, I am noticing just a fine little piece of rubber here. So I'm gonna, after I clean this rubber gasket off, the seal that goes around the oil, the bolt for the drain pan, I'm gonna use a razor and just nip that little piece off of there just to make sure. But yeah, simplistic, simply enough, we just wanna grab a rag or a paper towel. I prefer rags because I like to have them cleaned and then reuse them. It's better than throwing stuff in the garbage all the time. And uh, yeah, we just want to clean this up. Be gentle when you're cleaning it. You don't want to mess up that oil sing seal, oil ring that goes around there. I'll show you guys what I'm talking about right now. Okay. So again, this will be my second oil change and we're at 8,000 kilometers. So right here, let me get out of the focus. Right here you'll see the uh, little ring that goes around the bolt. We wanna make sure that that little bad boy right there is in good order. If it's not, we need to replace the bolt because in the Mopars, I believe this is just one piece. So anyway, in our case, we're good to go. We're gonna put this back on. I'm gonna put a little bit of fresh oil around here just to, cause I dried it off. I wanna make sure it's good. I'll clean up around the hole. We're gonna put this on hand tight show you guys the torque specs here in a minute for the oil cap and for the oil drain plug and uh, we'll torque everything up we'll go over how much oil to put in pretty easy we're back under what we're going to do now is we're going to take our drain plug and we're going to put it back into the oil pan and we're going to put it on by hand make sure you don't use power tools for this that's just silly um, we want to put it on by hand as far as we can we're gonna take our torque wrench and we're gonna torque it, if you have one, to 20 foot-pounds of torque. Now, I was able to screw that all the way in with my hands. It doesn't take any real force to do this and it doesn't take much to actually get it down. Um, grab this, we're gonna clean up around it real quick. Again, just in case. And then we want to get our torque wrench out. Now I've got mine set to 20. Oy, super tight fit under here. So 20 foot pounds of torque isn't much. Uh, once it's on there, it's on there. Now if you don't have a torque wrench, this is super easy. Just tighten it up by hand and once it gets tight, Give it just a little nudge more and you should be good. So let's go back up top. Let's put some oil in this bad boy and uh, let's get back to drinking some Jack Daniels. Okay guys, for this next part, it's super easy. We're gonna go and get our socket and wrench out. We're gonna put it back on our oil filter cap and then we're gonna take that off. First thing you wanna do though is we wanna protect the alternator and then we wanna have another rag to be able to catch whatever drippings that come off. So let's get our rag set up. Let's get our socket. 
And let's get this over with. So now our alternator is protected. We're going to just lay this here loosely just to make sure that any oil that does come off, we catch it. Okay, take this off. We don't need this. Now when I pull this out, you're going to find that it stays with, the filter stays with the cap. So pull it straight out and straight up. Okay, so let's look. It's not really dripping too much, so it's not that big of a worry. Now keep in mind, I changed my oil twice in 8,000 kilometers and that's what the filter looks like. Not a big deal. We're switching over to a K&N filter. I'm curious to see what it looks like next. But now we're going to go over what to do when you pull the filter off. Okay, so we got the oil filter off with the oil cap. We're just going to take the oil filter and then pull it straight out. And it should pop. Just like that. Now we're going to take this and put it straight into our oil pan with our old oil. Now keep in mind, with your old oil, don't put it in the bottle of the new oil and then throw it in the trash. Take it to anybody that changes oil or any recycling center and they'll take it free of charge. So it's a good way to protect the environment and it's a good way to get rid of your oil and not feel like a complete dirt bag for just tossing it in a landfill. So next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over the interior of the oil cap. Pour out whatever's left so we see that it's clean. Then we're gonna come and grab this. So I'm gonna tap it with the finger, hopefully it catches it. So there's a little groove here with a rubber o-ring. We just want to run this around until it starts to come off. And once it does, grab it with your finger, pull it off. Now, do not reuse this. We want to get rid of this. And yes, it may look good, it may look fine, but it comes with a new o-ring. Use the new o-ring. So we're going to put that in our oil pan as well for now. We'll clean it up later. So we'll put our pick tool down. We'll get our filter cap here. We're just going to clean it out. Make sure that it's all tidy and ready for the new one. Grab your threads. Clean up your threads really good. Okay, set that down. Let's get our new oil filter out and we'll put it in the cap. Show you guys how to do that. It's pretty straightforward and we'll move on to filling this bad boy up. Okay, so I sprung for an extra dollar and I think three cents for the K&N filter. Curious to see if it actually helps at all. Um, really like K&N for their air filtration. They're known for it. So I thought maybe we'd try it for their oil filters and see how it's going to work out. So again, K&N filter, we've got the PS-7026. So when you open it up, should be a brand new oil filter and an O-ring hiding in there. Bam! Okay, so we're gonna take that, toss it off to the side for now. So before we put this on, I'm just gonna set this up here in a clean space. We're gonna take our O-ring, we're gonna work it on, put it on where it belongs. So, Hopefully you guys are going to be able to see this. You see that groove that runs down there, the wide groove just behind the threads before this uh, lip? We want to run it and just roll it over that groove. Now you can use your fancy pick tool if you want, but I find just rolling it over works pretty good. If you want, some guys suggest taking your pick tool and just reaming it all the way around just to make sure that it's seated and there's no binding. I don't see the point, but whatever. Uh, okay, so now, you see this part? The pointy part, it's got a new O-ring on it, make sure that's there. You're gonna grab your oil filter, you're gonna come in here and that spot there, you're gonna take the flat end, put it in there until you hear that. It should flow freely. That's it. Put it back in the hole, torque it up. Okay, we'll slide it right back in there. We're gonna back thread it until you feel it drop.
There it goes. And then we'll thread it forward. Okay, hand tight for now. We got our torque wrench out. We got our socket with our extension. Remember, 24 mil socket. And we're gonna torque this down to 18 foot pounds of torque, which is, again, not very much. Remember, the bottom was only 20. So we're just gonna swing this bad boy around until you hear it click. You'll feel it, it'll be like almost like a bump. There it goes. That's on. So next, let's put some oil in it. Okay, so the next step, pretty straightforward. We're gonna get a filter, any kind you want. You're gonna take off your engine oil cap. Once that's off, put this in there so you don't spill oil all over your engine. I still have the cover over my alternator because it's so close to the oil spots where we've been working, just to protect it. And uh, yeah, we're gonna fill it up with five quarts of oil. now. I prefer using Royal Purple in this instance. The 5W, or excuse me, 0W20 is what we're using for the Gladiator. They asked for five quarts. Once I fill it up, we're gonna go and uh, start the engine up, run it for a hot second, turn it off, and then we're gonna check our oil. So we'll go over that. But first, let's fill this thing up. I filled it up. I left about a half a quart in here just to make sure that I don't overfill it in case any oil was left somewhere in the engine block and it didn't get drained out when we drain the oil. It can happen, so instead of overfilling, we want to protect ourselves and just make sure, because we can always add more, it's very easy. So, let's put the cap back on, let's double check everything, and move on. Okay, grab our oil cap, turn it until it locks in place. Just good OCD measures. And, Let's get all of our tools out of the way, start it up, let the engine run for a second, check the oil with our oil dipstick, which we're going to make sure is all the way down, and that's it. cranked up the engine for a bit. We're going to take our oil dipstick out and we're just going to clean it off. Make sure there's zero oil on it. Throw it back in. All the way down, let go. Pull it straight out. And then we want to check the inspection surface. Okay, well, we definitely need to add more oil, so let's do that. We were a little low whenever we filled it up. Uh, we left the half a quart out. Uh, the engine asked for five quarts. We filled it up with four and a half. Now we checked the dipstick. It was low, so we added the extra half a quart. I checked it again. Still low. So I'm going to check it one more time now that the engine settled for a second. And if it is still low, we're going to put in just maybe another quarter quart more. But... Uh, it's about halfway up the stick, which isn't bad, but uh, yeah, I'm just going to top it up with just a touch more, and then we're going to move inside the engine for the very last step, which is to reset your computer and let it know it's had a fresh oil change. Okay, so at this point, we want to go over to our stop, start, start engine stop button. We want to hit it twice, so once it'll say ACC, second time it'll say run. Don't put your foot on the brake, you're not trying to start it. Then we're going to come over here. And we're going to get into the function that's for all of your mechanical stuff like your engine oil and stuff like that. So it's going to be under vehicle info. You want to click over until you see oil. There's our engine oil temp, oil pressure. We want to reset it. So we're going to press and hold to reset the oil. And it is reset. That's it. All right, guys. Well, that's how to change the oil in a JTJL uh, Jeep. 
it's pretty straightforward uh, without doing the videos it takes like 30 minutes to do it's it's very easy remember your torque specs you want to torque the bottom to 20 top to 18 if I remember right uh, you want to use uh, clean all of your gasket surface on your drain plug bolt and then relubricate that with some fresh oil and then I put oil on the oil filter o-ring that we replaced as well and uh, just swirled it around to make sure there was no bind in it uh, when you're filling it up five quarts make sure you run your engine afterwards to get the oil to cycle through the engine and make sure everything is getting proper lubrication and then once it settles a bit go check your oil levels you should be bang on at five quarts or maybe a little bit more in my case it took just a wee bit more don't have a clue why but it seemed to be the case so anyway hope you guys enjoyed the videos as always don't forget like subscribe stay with us for more stuff in the future if there's anything you want to know about the jeeps give us a question give us a ask leave a comment below um, we're constantly modifying this thing and we're constantly making it so that our family can go off road and do some overlanding and have a blast so thanks a lot see you guys next time